Barakati Yahweh, Barakati Yahweh Shai. All praises and honor and glory be unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. As always, double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you prophets and teachers who hazard your lives daily to push this truth, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. And to you believers, you Akim, you few Akwatim, and children, peace be unto you and Shalom as well. We are all waiting for these last and final prophecies to happen in the earth and the return of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai and the promises that were promised unto our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, which is concerning us, their descendants, all right, that are Israelites, beginning with the elect. All right, and it's all about the elect. All right, we're given diligence to make our calling and election sure. You know, the scripture speaks about, you know, the predestination. All right, it speaks about those that were um, chosen from the beginning. All right, because there has been a selection that was made. Uh, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai before the foundations were laid. All right, before anything that you see now was, all right, there was a chosen, all right, that were already pre preordained or predestinated by the Heavenly Father to be the elect. Okay? And by way of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding being pushed, all right, by way of this truth being preached, all right, Yahweh. Bahasham Yahawashai through the holy prophets are right, are are sealing are the elects. Uh, a scripture that is embedded in my mind, you know, and the reason that it's embedded is because, you know, this is um, a scripture that back when I was first coming into the faith, or rather allowed to come into the faith. All right, the spirit was on Apostle Gabar, you know, to constantly. You know, go over the importance of the elect because you have the elect of the Heavenly Father and then you also have the two thirds. I was two thirds of the nation of Israel. All right. They're slated for destruction. All right. They their bodies have to be destroyed on this side so that their spirits can be preserved and they can come back in the kingdom of heaven being regenerated, you know, or being reborn through the elect. All right. And in coming out better, all right, being made better. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse four, says, according as Yahweh have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Mashiach to himself, according to uh, the good pleasure of of his will so you have those that are predestinated all right the predestinated are the chosen the word there for predestinated is por orizo and it says to predetermine decide beforehand and the nt which is the new testament of yahweh decree decreeing from eternity to fordain a point beforehand so who did he appoint beforehand he appointed his election okay Let's go into the word election, which um, I'll go to it from here, which is the book of Romans. The 11th chapter and beginning at verse one, which it reads, I say, then have Yahweh cast away his people and who is the heavenly father's people? His people is the children of Israel, right? Yahweh forbid. For I also am a Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul is saying that he's an Israelite too. All right. Through, uh, uh, through the seed of Abraham by way of Benjamin. Okay. Now there are scriptures where the apostle Paul said that I too am a Roman. Which shows you that just because you're from a particular province. All right doesn't make you of that nation because people will get caught up where it says, you know, um, the Italian brand or may mention a particular prophet and might call him a Tishbite or something along the lines of that. Uh, that's just basically the country, all right, or the city that he comes from, which shows you that he's a citizen of that particular area. All right. That doesn't necessarily determine his nationality. 
Now reading on, it says, Yahweh have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Which you have uh, something with Christians called replacement theology. All right, this is a clear cut to replacement theology. What does it say? Yahweh have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Walk ye not what the scripture saith, uh, uh, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to Yahweh against Israel, saying, Yahweh, they have killed the prophets and dig down thine altars, and all, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of Yahweh unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, even at this present time. Also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Now, when you go into the word for remnant, the word there is uh, uh, lime. All right, and it goes into a remnant, okay? The root of lime is a uh, uh, lepo, which means to leave, all right? To leave behind, to forsake, to be left behind. Um, and that's the reason why when you go into particular scriptures uh, pertaining to prophecy, it speaks about a remnant, all right? Being saved, because really that's all that it's about, all right? The, the remnant is going to be saved. All right, when you go into scriptures like the book of 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, verse 16, for I conceive the mind understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe to them that are not left behind. Because those that are not left behind are those that are killed, are those that are destroyed. Jumping down to verse 18, now understanding, I the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them, and to those that are left behind. Jumping down to verse 22. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind. This is the interpretation. Jumping down to verse 24. Know this therefore. That they which be left behind are more blessed than they be dead. Yeah because they are preserved. Being a remnant. Alright. Being a remnant. Jumping down to verse 26. The same is he whom. Yahweh the highest have kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature and shall order them that are left behind. Because as it is written within the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 30. All right, it reads this. It says, uh, I'll start at 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, Shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Uh, the powers of of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds and in heaven with power and great glory. And these tribes that are mourning are the Israelites that rejected Yahweh Shai. You know, yeah, the heathens, you know, rage in vain. All right, the heathens, you know, and the uh, the militaries are going to gather against Yahweh Shai, and he's going to destroy them. He's going to kill the wicked. But then you're going to have Israelites that are destroyed too, because by way of them being the tribes and Yahweh Shai coming for them, all right, they rejected Yahweh Shai. All right, a lot of them are the ones that stood all right, as false witnesses against him, all right, and, and, and said, crucify him, crucify him, all right, delivering him up to Pontius Pilate and the heathens to uh, be crucified, which was something that had to happen pertaining to prophecy, say, so that he can become the propitiation, the atonement for the nation beginning with the elect. Now, the word for tribes is G5443, which is Fule, and it says in the New Testament, or the person descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. So it lets you know who it's talking about. It's speaking about Israelites, which are going to mourn. It says, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven, even unto the other. We can also pull the word for elect 
uh, within this verse, which the word there is eclectos, and it means to pick out chosen, chosen by Yahweh to obtain salvation through Yahweh Shai. Uh, Christians are called chosen or elect of Yahweh. And this doesn't pertain to everyone that today will call themselves a Christians because uh, initially the true followers of Yahweh Shai were called Christians, which were Israelites. They were Israelites. They were called Christians as an insult. Okay. So this is speaking of the, the true followers of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai that are the elect. The Messiah is called elect as appointed by Yahweh to the most exalted office conceivable choice selected an example the best of its kind or class excellent preeminent applied to certain individual followers of Yahweh Shai. although it says christians there it really means to be a follower of Yahweh Shai. now it says best of its kind because only the elect are the best of its kind concerning the rest of the people all right, the scripture says that they were created in vain. All right, when you go into the book of the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, and bear with me, you know, as I um, locate it. All right, so this is Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, and I'll start up at verse seventeen. And he answered me saying, like as the field is, so is also the seed. And as the, the flowers or the salaki, the flowers be, such are the colors also, such as the workman is, such also is the work. And as the husbandman is himself, so is the husbandry also for it was the time of the world. And now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made even for them that dwell uh, in that now live to dwell in that now live. No man spake against me for then every one obeyed. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupt by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable, searchable, read themselves. Okay. So I considered the world and behold, there was peril. There was destruction because of the devices that will come in it and to it. And the scripture says that the heavenly father created men to be upright, you know, but they sought out many inventions. And I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then which were born in vain and let my grape be kept and my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect. Nevertheless, if thou will cease yet seven more days, but thou shalt not fasten them. Okay. So this grape, you know, or this, this, uh, plant, you know, that was kept this grape, uh, Salakia, it says, and let my grape be kept in my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. All right, these are the elect. These are those that are the best of their kind. All right, which um, from the seeds of a grape, all right, you can bring forth more grapes, you know, that are better than those that, that were before. So anyways, the heavenly father has his election. All right, this is the point that I'm making, you know, because you have... All right, the Sakari, you have, uh, um, you know, uh, other groups that are out there that believe that coming together just because they're Israelites is what you're supposed to do. But really, they can never come together in true unity because there is division amongst them. They don't speak the same thing. So although they uh, come together in the confederacy, all right, this is all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, because... What he's doing is he's separating the true prophets from those that are the false prophets. All right. He's separating, making a separation between the house of David and the house of Saul. He's making a separation between his elect and those that are not his elect. All right. The book of Romans 11 and 5, once more, even so at this present time, also 
there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So now let's look up the word election, which the word here is a difference. It's not a eclectos, you know, as the uh, other word that we read for elect. But this one is ecloge. And it says the act of picking out, choosing. All right, of the act of Yahweh's free will by which before the foundation of the world, he decreed his blessing to certain persons. The decree made uh, from choice by which he determined to bless certain persons through Yahweh by grace alone. A thing or person chosen of persons Yahweh's elect. All right, the root of that is Eklogeme. And it means, it basically says the same thing of Yahweh choosing whom he judged fit to receive his favors and separate from the rest of mankind to be peculiarly his own and to be attended continually by his gracious oversight. An example, the Israelites, but not just the Israelites, because going back over to the book of Romans, all right, the ninth chapter. They are not all Israel that are of Israel. The book of Romans, the ninth chapters, uh, and going to the fifth verse. And matter of fact, let me start at, at, at one. I say the truth in Yahweh Shia, lie not, my conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites to whom pertain of the, uh, the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of Yahweh and the promises? Who are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Yahweh came? Who is over all Yahweh blessed forever. Amen. So that shows you that Yahweh Shai only came for the Israelites. Not as though the word of Yahweh have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Because you have two Israels. You have Israel as a whole, which is the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or the 12 tribes of Israel. But then you have the elect, all right, which is, which is a, um, a world inside of a world. All right, you have the elect, and this is the Israel of Yahweh. Galatians 6, and I believe that's 16, which reads, For as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of Yahweh. Because you have Israel, but then you have the Israel of Yahweh. All right, this is the elect. Now, going back to the book of Romans. All right, because I want to get that scripture, Romans 9 and 6, all right, and uh, the NLT, which reads, it says, Well then, has Yahweh failed to fulfill his promise to Israel? No, for not all who are born into the nation of Israel are truly members of Yahweh's people. Yeah, because you have the Israel of the Heavenly Father. So when we do these lessons, when we do these video pictures, when we go out to the highways and hedges, Although we're commanded to, you know, uh, uh, prophesy into the world, although we're commanded to push this truth throughout the four corners of the earth, really the reason that we're doing it is to gather the elect. Now, when you push this truth, you know, uh, you're going to have all kinds that are gathered. All right. The scripture says that the kingdom of heaven is like a net. All right. That was cast into the sea. And gathered all kind. And let me see um, if I can find that. Yep, the book of Matthew 13 and 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into, into vessels but cast the bed away. And that's what's going to happen. All right. And in the, the time when the heavenly father sent forth Yahweh Shai, he's going to come with the angels and, and he's going to send forth the angels 
uh, which are going to gather the elect and those that are bad are going to be left to be destroyed. So really, it's about gathering the elect. And when the elect hears this truth, right, they're going to gravitate to it. They're not going to gravitate to anything else. And if they were uh, amongst anything else doctrine wise, all right, uh, uh, amongst other camps that have particular doctrines, they're going to come out from among them. They're going to come out from among them and they're going to gravitate towards the truth because it's in their spirit to gravitate towards his truth. Yeah, how about Shem is going to pull them out? All right. But you, this isn't going to be achieved by you entering into unity and saying that you stand in unity with somebody that doesn't even believe in the same Yahweh as you. They don't uh, uh, believe. In the, in, in the same Messiah as you Alright, they identify Alright, the Messiah as Christ Alright, and not his true name, Yahweh They don't even teach the same doctrine as you So just by saying that you're in unity with them Isn't going to achieve What Yahweh Shem Yahweh has set up to be achieved Alright The way that it's going to be achieved is just simply by pushing this truth. All right. You see, look, when someone's preaching something that's wrong and they're going off in doctrine, you're supposed to contend with them as it states within the book of Jude. And I believe uh, that's Jude 1 and 2. But I'll start at 1. It says, Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shemashiach and the brother of James to them that are sanctified by Yahweh the Father and preserved in Yahweh Shemashiach and call. Mercy unto you in peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was delivered unto the saints. Now, let me read this in the NLT. It says, dear friends, I have been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. All right. Um, but now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that Yahweh has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. So how do you defend the faith? All right. Let's look up the word contend because it says that you should earn earnestly contend for the faith. Let's look up the word contend, earnestly contend. The word there is epagonizomai. And it says to contend, to uh, struggle for. All right, just like um, someone that's a wrestler. When you wrestle, your motive is to try to pin your opponent down to the ground. All right, to get them to submit. All right. You can also use this as a, a, a reference in boxing. All right. When you box, you dodging those punches and you throwing them to, to uh, land points and maybe a knockout ultimately to get the victory. All right. To uh, um, to to get the mastery over your opponent that you're contending against. Now, in the regards of this faith, those are those that are coming with these wayward doctrines with false doctrines. All right, with teachings that are contrary to that which you have learned from the apostles. All right, the scriptures say that you must continue in the apostles' doctrine. The word agonizomai means to enter into uh, enter a contest, contending in gymnastic games. So when you're running, you know you're running against opponents. You know when you're swimming, you're swimming against opponents. All right, I spoke of wrestling. All right, and ultimately, what are you doing? You're contending. So in this, this case, we're contending against false prophets. We're contending, contending against wayward doctrines. All right, we're defending the gospel. Okay? It says to contend with adversaries, to fight, metaphor, to con contend, struggle with difficulties and dangers, and divert with strenuous zeal, strive to obtain something. But if you're entering into unity with them, then basically you're not contending against them. All right. Basically, you're not going to say anything against them to reprove them, to rebuke them with all long suffering, as the scriptures say that you should. All right. This is the book of. Um, 
the book of 2 Timothy 4 and 2. It says, preach the word, be instant in season, and out of season, re reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See? Uh, in the NLT, it reads, preach the word of Yahweh, be prepared with the time, I said like it, whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage you people with good teachings. All right, so... How are you correcting somebody? If you believe in the MOTB is the RFID CHIP and another person doesn't believe that, how can you come together in unity with them? If you believe in the name of Yahawashai and someone else believe that the name of Yahawashai isn't important or that we don't have the true Hebrew. So therefore, we don't have the true names of Yahweh and Yahawashai. How can you come in unity with somebody like that? All right. It's impossible. That means that in order for you to come in, in full unity in true unity, that means that either one of you would have to, you know, leave their particular beliefs and adopt the other's belief. So, yeah, all of y'all can come together in a unity, but it's a false unity. It's not the same unity as the unity of the elect. All right. Which are going to be truly built up and edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh like it states within the book of uh, Ephesians. All right. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Yahweh. All right. The tabernacle of David is, is being built till we all come in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of Yahweh unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahweh Shai. And that's not being done through what you're trying to achieve as all of you camps that have different doctrines coming together. All right. That's not the unity of the faith. All right. So what you have is not true unity. The word here for unity is he notes and it says uh, unanimity. All right, agreement. All right, so I must end on this one. This is the book of Amos 3 and 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? All right. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The word in Hebrew is uh, ya'id, and it means to assemble. All right. Uh, appointment. And let me do something real fast. I just want to look up the word appointment. Yep, the word appointment means an agreement. All right, also a fixing of a date for official business. Uh, arrange, settle, place. Let me look up the word appoint now. To decide, resolve, to arrange the time. So anyways... You can't walk in agreement unless, you know, you are teaching the same thing. All right. And you're not teaching the same thing. You don't believe the same thing. But really, it's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because he's mocking. He's mocking all of you false prophets out there. You know, and in this lesson, I really intended, you know, to go into something else. But this is what the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai wanted to come out. I hope that this was edifying our praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, the Buanas to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and peace, love, salutation, mercy be unto the whole flow of Shalom, Abad, Babal, Kwam Bakiyam, Shalom.